So it's been brought to our attention that a lot of women with vulvodynia don't realize what the term vestibulodynia means, and they're not quite sure what that is. And I have a sneaky suspicion that a lot of people with vulvodynia actually have vestibulodynia because it's one of the most common causes of vulvodynia. So today we're going to get into a little bit of anatomy and explain what the different parts of the vulva, the vestibule, and the vagina are. Most people don't really look at their vulva, and if they do, they don't really know what they're looking for. So today, let's take a look at the vulva and see what you're looking at. When you do a self-examination, you're going to put a mirror between your legs. And the first thing you're going to see is the labia majora. So that's the tissue that has hair on it. Inside, you're going to see another set of labia, your labia minora. And some people have long, short, bigger, smaller. All of that is normal variation. If you are a woman who has larger labia minora, you're going to want to separate those tissues so you can actually see what you're looking at. And once you separate the tissues, then you want to see if you can see where your vagina is and where your urethra is. And sometimes you need to separate the labia minora a little further than you may think to actually be able to see the urethra, especially if you have not had children, you're in your 20s and 30s, it's not exactly an obvious structure. That's why so many people don't know where it is. Yeah, and so a good way to start to see that is at the top, you're going to see your clitoris. And then just below that, you're going to have another area of tissue. That's where your urethra is. And then just below that, you're going to see the vagina, which in some women that have intact hymen, you might see some folding around that opening. And that's going to be right where the vestibule is. And inside of that is the vagina. It is inside of us. The correct terminology matters, and it's understandable that people say vagina because that's what we know the most. But the vulva and the vagina are completely separate structures derived from different embryologic layers, and the vestibule is different than the vulva. So the vestibule really separates the vulva area from the vagina, and they're different. They have different nerve endings, they have different functions, they're completely different structures. So we really think to understand where the penis is coming from, and what our healthy pelvic health is like, we need to understand the differences between these structures. Yeah, when somebody has pain with sex, questions that we ask all the time are, is, does it hurt when something goes in? And that might be true for gynecological exams and also tampon insertion. Or is there pain deeper inside, which may indicate more muscular um, structures or other structures deeper inside and may not be an issue with the actual vestibule. So when we're in the clinic, a good way to teach our patients with the mirror is we can touch these different areas with a Q-tip. We can touch the inner labial area, we can touch the vestibule, and we can touch the vagina. And so often, if we touch the vestibule with the Q-tip, they say, that's my pain with sex. Then we go over the vestibule and touch the vagina, nothing hurts. So it's really interesting and, and it's gratifying for patients to see that if we can touch and reproduce their symptoms, then we know what the problem is and then we can treat it. Yeah, there's very different solutions based on where the pain's coming from. If they have no issues on the vestibule and we get into the pelvic floor and they start to say, that's my pain, that's where we can provide a lot of work and we can loosen up those muscles, we can address muscle trigger points, um, address their resting tone. But if there is issues with the vestibule, we may need to, to consider sending them to another provider or vulvar specialist to help them, in addition to PT, address those concerns. A general rule of thumb is if we see changes in redness and fragile tissue all throughout the vestibule, that's probably a hormonal issue. If people have one-sided pain, such as just right-sided pain with penetration, we may see some issues in the vestibule on the right, the left looks normal, and then we see pelvic floor dysfunction on the right. So it's really pairing together what the patients are telling us and their physical findings. Yeah, and some of the people that we'll see the issues with the vestibule with are people that have been on hormonal birth control, acne medications, or maybe they've just had a baby and they're breastfeeding, or um, they've gone through menopause, so they have hormonal insufficiencies. So those are some indications if you're having pain with sex or you're having urinary issues you, and you fall into one of those categories, you may be having both vestibular pain but also pelvic floor dysfunction as a result. And so when you're doing the exam on yourself, take a look at your anatomy. Do you see differences from right to left, from top to bottom? Touch it with a Q-tip. Do things feel different? Surprisingly, or not, 
When you touch the areas that are red, that's going to hurt more than you touch an area that's pink. This really helps people understand what's going on and it makes it a little less scary. If we can see it, we can touch it, we can reproduce it, we know what the problem is. When people don't examine their vulva, it just feels like this big black area of pain and it's very confusing to people. But when we really look at the issues, you can see the problems in the tissues, you can see the problems in the muscles, and we can watch that change over time as people start to get treated. If the symptoms we're describing resonate with you and you have or you haven't looked in the mirror and you're interested in finding help for the problems, use our resources in the links below and find a physical therapist or a vulvar expert near you.